Hey guys, um, I've modified the links to now be able to be HPA and take a Specs BZ. So I'm just going to take you through the changes that I made. Now with the 3D printed parts, I've modified the receiver. I've modified the sear. I've modified the handle just slightly. It has uh, just a little hole in the bottom to let the tube come out. I've modified the turnaround um, just so that it can take the specs BZ. And there is now another little piece here. This is a spacer that will basically slide into there. That kind of holds the valve away from the air tank in the right place. And then also I've just modified the pump slightly. Um, because you no longer need the slop in it because all you're doing is moving kind of the I don't know, the ram that pushes the dart in rather than also priming a spring which would normally need a, a longer travel. Uh, so that's that. Now let's get on to the other parts that you need. Okay, so I've done this so that you can use the normal Lynx hardware kit and you don't need anything else in terms of or needing to modify it, um, but you will need some of the HPA components. So of course you're going to need a Specs BZ, um, some sort of stud that comes right out the back so that you can shove some airline into it. Um, that's then going to come into your standard MJ30V valve that we all use for HPA. And you're going to need two elbows. Um, I've used two um, Ligris um, elbow fittings. Um, you're going to need to use these because they're very small and compact. Um, if you use some other brands, and it might be too big to actually fit within uh, the blaster. Then that's going to have another bit of airline coming out of the blaster to your quick disconnect fitting um, or for whatever you use to travel to the paintball tank that you'll be carrying on you. The one other thing is that in order to seal the uh, Specs BZ into the turnaround, which we have here. Um, you do need one new O-ring. Um, this is a inner diameter of 19 millimeters and a cross section of three millimeters. And I've looked this up even just on eBay. It's quite easy to find. Uh, so now I'll get into just um, building the links. Alright, just to show you this is as easy as uh, building a normal Lynx, we'll start with the receiver here, the trigger and the modified sear, so I'll pop those in. So that's working nicely. You can see it in the top here, slightly. That's what's going to hit the valve. Cool, so then we'll take the kind of what would have been the spring section, we'll take the air tank, turn around and the other HPA parts. So first what you're going to want to do is, like I said, you're going to put this um, kind of stud in the back of the air tank and you're going to put a bit of airline in it. And you want this to be a bit longer uh, than you think to begin with. So you're going to take this part, and this is going to go through here with the airline just poking out the top here like this. And you push this in. If it's a bit tight, you can just give it a bit of a sand, but make sure you shove that in all the way so that's uh, flush. And you've got a bit of your airline out the top here. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your MJ3, <laughs> MJVO3 valve and you're going to put the elbows in like this. Now the top one uh, you're going to shove that onto your airline and then your, air, your valve should then sit sort of in here. Now it's not going to be able to go in all the way because you've made your airline too long but basically check how far out it's kind of sitting and then take this off. Ooh. And then slowly cut down your airline just bit by bit um, because if you do this too much and you make it too short then you've wasted that airline and you're just going to have to cut another long piece again. So just do this carefully 
um, until you get to the point where you've got the right length, which I have. So I'm going to shove that on. And now this is going to be able to essentially sit very nicely like that. There's a little surface at the back of the valve and a little surface for the top of the valve. So it should just be able to sit like that. Um, of course, when you let go, it's going to fling out a little bit, but that's fine. So then I'm going to take the turnaround piece and just um, pop my new O-ring in. There we go. It's in there. Nice. Just like the one for the barrel. And then that's going to kind of shove in here. Again, it might be a bit of a tight fit. Oh, no, that went on all right. <laughs> And again, you want that to be flush. So now you've kind of got your main section here, which we're going to put into the receiver. Um, now we're going to put it in just a little bit, not quite all the way. And uh, as you put it in, you might have to um, push the valve down with your finger in here, just because, like I said, the valve likes to kind of spring up a bit. So just have to kind of pull it down as you push it in. Um, when it goes in, there's this main horizontal feature which is going to stop it from going too far, and then also some channels on the left and right to kind of guide it into the right place. So that's sort of how it should look. But you're going to pull it out slightly, and you're going to get your air line that goes from there outside the blaster. And there's just a little hole in the bottom here. You're just going to shove that in, and you're going to push it all the way through until you can kind of see it. Let's see if I can get this on camera. It's a bit dark, but basically through here you'll be able to see your airline just kind of poke up, and then also that's where the end of your elbow is going to be. So basically, I'm just going to pull this in or out. I'm just going to slightly move this until my elbow that I have in there is just above my airline. There we go. So now I've got it just above and so now I can push my airline in. There we go and now I know it's into the elbow. So now I can continue to push this back all the way in. Again, I'm just pushing the valve down slightly to make sure it gets underneath that horizontal feature. There we go, and that's in place. It's going to want to spring out a little bit, um, but once you put the whole blaster together, that will be fine and that won't keep happening. So, now we just get on with most of the rest of the blaster. Cool, so I'm just going to get the pump now, which is slightly different. Essentially, well, I'll pop it in just to show you. Pull it over just like the normal links. Pop it in place. Um, but you can see here I've increased this so that it kind of wraps around this cutout so then you won't get any slop anymore. That's basically the only change I made. Cool, okay, so that's mostly done. Um, now just with the handle here, um, there's a little hole um, in the bottom here just so again you can get the airline through so just pop that through and then squeeze it into place like normal there we go and then uh, yeah pop your screws in all right so then I'm going to pop my quick disconnect on the end there and that should be it yeah so if you try and pull the trigger and have a look in the front you should see that the new sear is hitting the valve and um, everything else should be pretty tight 
um, you have a slightly, as I said, slightly less distance on that pump now because all you're doing is moving the dart in instead of priming a spring. Um, yeah, I guess we should go see a firing demo now. Cool. All right, so these uh, modified files and um, just a description of the O-ring will be available for a free download on my website, patchattachments.co.uk. Of course, under you know whatever license it needs to be as a as a modification of some Lynx parts. Uh, so you can go see it over there. Um, it's currently in metric version, um, but I think soon I might be getting someone to turn that back into the uh, Imperial for anyone who's using that as well. Cool. So uh, thanks for watching. See you soon.